Hi, this is Scott. You may remember me from a few years ago where I ripped a book apart and scanned it and put it on an iPad. Something like that. Well, since that video I've had a lot of views, um, I didn't think I would make any more videos based on that subject, but have had a couple requests about making that book searchable, making a PDF that's searchable, which I wanted to show you today. So let's do it. Um, I don't want to take too much time in showing you what I've got to show you because it's actually a very quick item. Uh, it's a checkbox. You check a box to make your text searchable, and I'm going to show that to you on this computer here. Okay, so now I'm looking at the scan snap software. If you have a different scanner, it'll be similar. Uh, I have different profiles, and I got to imagine that other scanners have these profiles as well. These are profiles that I created in the software uh, for the specific type of scan I need. So if I just click on scan snap, and then I have all these. Uh, profiles where I can uh, scan a book or you know a magazine photo and so on so I'll pick book searchable which is already checked so I did promise you that checkbox so if we go into the scan snap manager and if I hit settings I'm gonna look at the settings of that particular profile that I set up so basically if I look at the um, is it file options? Yeah. It is, you've got the OCR option here, convert to searchable PDF. That's the only checkbox you even need. What's really nice about that is it'll embed the searchability inside the PDF as it's created, and it'll do it at the same time that it's scanning. It does it right on top of the scanning. So you can even tell the computer's working a little harder with this type of scan over if I didn't do it at all. It would just be an easy scan. I can tell that the the revs of the microprocessor are kind of boosting up so that it can actually read that. And it does it very, very quickly too. This is not a slow process. It's by the time that book is done scanning, it might be a few seconds after that thing is done. Well, what are some of the other options you ask or some of the other settings that I like for a book? I'll tell you, um, in this particular uh, scanning, tab you've got I like black and white um, then there's not a lot of gray in between the letters and you'll see why uh, duplex of course because it gets both sides of the page uh, I don't allow it to rotate because sometimes it rotates incorrectly so I get a page that's upside down I know that I'm putting it into the scanner correctly so therefore I don't allow it to figure that out for me on this particular profile here in these options I reduce uh, bleed through because quite often the scanner is so good that it'll actually get some of the text from the other side of the page as it glows through from the other side of this the scanner because there's a, a backlight on both sides so that'll reduce it for you um, I don't mess with brightness uh, I do increase the text contrast and that kind of makes that text pop and when you do that it actually allows the OCR to get a better capture and it does really well uh, whatever I search for it is there and I'll tell you I'll show you a place where it doesn't work so well okay uh, let's get into some books I use iBooks on a Mac to organize the PDFs uh, what's nice about that is I can just put the uh, throw the books in there they go up to the iCloud and they come right down on my iPad automatically uh, you can use a lot of things for that though so as you can see a uh, little bit of a fan of Frederick Pohl as of recently uh, I had gateway as a scanned book in there forever but I just recently got to it my wife read it too she liked it so we went to a used bookstore and picked up a whole bunch of his books that they had right there they were really cheap because not only a couple of them were even available on Amazon as an ebook at all and they were all ten dollars a pop um, so I'd rather if I'm gonna buy a bunch see if the used bookstore happens to have them first okay so Here's what some of the text looks like. This is a very blown up, it's not gonna be like this on your on your iPad or your Kindle. Um, but I like to do it as it looks uh, in the book form. I don't rearrange it in ebook format. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. But let's do some searching. So here's a, a long, a very large book. Would have taken forever if I took a picture of it all. Um, I scanned in color, the front and back cover. 
But then for the other pages, I just did the black and white. So it makes for a much smaller file size. Let's do a search. So if I go to the top of the page here, I'm going to search on the computer. It searches for reefs, reefs of space, reefs, 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 and more reefs. I didn't know there were so many reefs in this book, but on and on it goes. Uh, and it'll search all of it. And it outlines it for you too. It's a little bit off, but you get the idea. And if I was to double tap on a word to try to select that or select maybe a paragraph or, or I could do that too and I can copy. You can't paste because <laughs> it's a locked PDF, but you can copy right out of it, which you couldn't do if you didn't make it searchable. Now let's see what this looks like right on an iPad. Same book. Uh, normally I would have it up and down. Well, let me see if I can do that here. I, normally I'd read it like this, uh, but you get the idea. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for the camera. Um, but what I like too is I can, it really pops the color and I can kind of zoom in and see some of the detail that a book has that sometimes comes out pretty dark by the time you buy it used. Um, but here I can see, and this isn't a very good cover, it's pretty blurry and old. Um, but here, check out that Star Child. Oh boy. Boy, it looks like 2001 to me. Anyway, um, let's zoom across here. Same book, same PDF, same text. Basically what I can do is just take, just like your finger, you put it down, you can you can highlight just like you could before. Uh, the iPad's never been good at highlighting. Um, but let's say you push down on a, on a word, hit look up, and it looks up the word just like it would if it was an, a regular ebook. So there's a lot of words I come across. I can't I don't see anything I don't recognize here, but um, um, anywhere. Boom, there you go. You've looked up, done your regular lookup, and it does get a pretty good accuracy to the OCR software. Now here's another example of what I was talking about before with illustrations. Uh, here's a book I picked up recently. It is a book that's out of print. I didn't see it anywhere electronically, so I just bought an old used copy off Amazon, cut it up, and then put it in. And this is a book I would like to even make reference of. Um, so as you can see, this kind of stuff here wouldn't translate very well if I just made it into an ebook. Um, let's go to, uh, here we go. So as you can see, there's these hand, uh, what I assume is hand-drawn illustration, um, nicely done. I don't want to lose that. But here again, this is where a normal text um, would actually do well with OCR, but then as soon as you move over to the illustration, it doesn't do it so well. Uh, maybe it does. Let's see if it does that. Microsoft XH. So this is where it might fail here. Something that's hand-drawn letters, as you can see. S with a capital H, ton. And then if you got a line going through it like this, there's just no way. Diaverzia. That's close. That's pretty good. It's trying. There you go. That's a good example. I mean, this I'm not going to look up anyway, but it's nice to look at. Well, folks, there you go. That's a couple of the other reasons why I really like to scan books and have them with me wherever I go. And I don't really like bookshelves. They're so old-fashioned, don't you think? Oh, and by the way, I know that cutting up books is kind of scary, so it is a cut-up book. Ah!